Hi there, I'm Jamie Dunbar, and welcome back to the Dunbar Dog Diaries, The Puppy Next Door. This is week three, video three. In our last training session, I introduced Daisy to some objects by filling our training studio with a ton of crap. In this video, we're going to head out into the world to show Daisy the sights and sounds of life in the big city. However, before we jump into the video, I just wanted to say that if you are enjoying this series and you want to learn more about dog training and behavior, make sure to check out our self-guided dog training courses at DunbarAcademy.com. We have hundreds of hours of dog training videos, lectures, and seminars, as well as worksheets and eBooks, all of which can be purchased individually or as part of our $20 Top Dog Academy subscription. Alternatively, if you're interested in real-time live online puppy classes with some of the best puppy training instructors in the world, check out our sister site, SeriousPup.com. Our small live online classes will teach you all the essential skills you need to raise and train your puppy or adult dog. And the best part is you'll have access to a real live instructor who will coach and guide you through any issues you might have and answer all of your dog training questions. It's easily one of the best ways to get the support you need to raise a puppy all without leaving the comfort of your own home. If you're interested in either of these, we'll provide links to both in the description down below. Okay, with that out of the way, let's jump into the video. All right, so here I am with Daisy on a uh, corner cafe for our first field trip together, you know? So Daisy needs to start getting used to going out and seeing the big sights of the big city and uh, learning that whatever she sees out here, it's no big deal. So. Daisy and I have been hanging out here on this corner now, her and her little carrier for a little while. I'm going to see if she wants to come out and just watch things go by. And uh, we'll just see people come through. That's exactly what we want for Daisy to see new sights, some new sounds. You know, she'll see some cars. She'll see some people. I've got her leash just in case she gets out of my hand, but I'm not gonna put her down on the ground because Daisy doesn't have her shots yet. So we're just out here, it's in my lap, in the carrier. Good girl, Daisy. See some big trucks roll by. See some people walk by. And just a little desensitization. So you can start these little field trips they don't have to be anything big or special. You can just start by taking your uh, pup to places you would usually go and uh, letting them sniff around a little. Again, don't put them on the ground. Uh, we don't want her to get parvovirus before her immunizations are complete. Oh, Daisy, did you see the motorcycle? Yeah, there's a lot of exciting things to see out in the world. And we want Daisy to see these exciting things when she is a little puppy. So I've just got some of a regular kibble here. You know, we tried to find a corner where we're going to see some cars drive by. But really, we're just going to relax here for 5, 10, 15 minutes. You know, she'll spend some time in my lap. Spend some time in the carrier, maybe. And then we'll go back home. Um, if anyone does want to meet her, that is something that we can do. We can have uh, strangers approach her. Offer her some kibble. If um, we had a good setup, I could even have them uh, do a little training with her, but for that we would need to be able to put Daisy down somewhere. And we can't put her down on the ground right now, so, you know, that might not happen. And we're not in a big hurry to do that anyways. Just having people walk by, that's, that's enough. Isn't that right, Daisy? Yes. Yes, you see the people? Oh, good girl. Yes. Good girl. No, thank you. Don't need that. No. Good girl. Yeah. What do we see out there? All right. Well, I'm going to hang out here with Daisy for, you know, another five, ten minutes and uh, help her get used to the big city. I'll see you in the next video.
All right, so we're gonna keep going, keep exploring. Uh, let's go see what we can find, some nice places to hang out and uh, give Daisy a few treats. Watch the sights. Let's go, Daisy. Good girl. Big bus. It's going to make a loud noise, I think, Daisy. Oh, yeah. Good girl. Mwah. Yes. We like buses. Oh, was that loud? That was very loud. Oh, yeah. Here's what we think about buses. Oh, yeah. That was extra tasty treats. Oh, I see a doggy across the street. Ooh, is that a cookie doggy? Cookie doggy over there. Ah. Oh. Wow. That was loud, right? That was very loud. All right, so now we're getting ready to go out for a field trip in the car. Um, we've been doing stuff with Daisy now for a little while. She hasn't had a break. She's finally starting to settle down in her carrier, but uh, we're gonna go out and about. I imagine she'll take some naps in the carrier. That's fine. Uh, I wanted to give her a chance to get used to this car. She's never been in this car before. So before I'm gonna drive anywhere with her, I figured I'd sit in the car with her, let her settle down. She's doing a great job of settling down right now. Good job, girl. Yeah. Might actually take a little moment, get her out for a second, just so she can really, oh, see, see this vehicle. Whoop, whoop. There we go, hey Daisy. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we'll go see if we can find some other places to explore. So, you know, we're here at the park. There's birds, there's the wind in the trees, there's some kids way off in the distance playing around. Just want to show Daisy, these are all normal things, nothing to be worried about. We don't want you messing with your leash though. Yeah, let me see, maybe if I smush this up into my hands. No, oh, thank you. There we go. There we go. I just wanted to have a leash on in case she does get loose. Woo! Woo! There we go. Yeah. Okay, let's see. What about. So 
some tastier treats. Huh? Good girl. Yeah. Ooh, do you hear that, Daisy? I hear a leaf blower. Let's go check it out. Let's go check out that leaf blower. Oh, go in here. Whoop. Heard a leaf blower over there. Figure we should go take a look so Daisy can see a leaf blower. Do you hear that? Oh, is that cool? That's so cool, right? Do you hear the leaf blower? It's very loud, right? Vroom, vroom, vroom. What do you think? Oh, and a lawnmower. A lawnmower. Very nice. Ooh. Yeah. Mwah. 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 We are not afraid of lawnmowers or leaf blowers, are we? All right, off we go. All right, so we went to our neighborhood cafe, walked around a little, sat at a bus stop, went to a pet store and bought Daisy a new toy, then went to a park and got the chance to see a leaf blower and a lawnmower in action. That was a big day. I should point out though, that we took a big break between some of these activities. We stayed close to home and we came back to drink some water, use the potty and take a nap. All right, let's see what Kelly has to say about Daisy's big day out. Okay. Hi, Kelly. How's it going? Hello. I'm good. How are you? Pretty good. Pretty good. So we just watched um, Daisy's Big Day Out with Jamie. Um, we went on a, a few little excursions, tried to see some sights and, and see some new, new places and sounds and smells. So uh, what did you think? I thought that was really wonderful. Um, overall, it was like a beautiful day. Um, was it indeed just one day? This wasn't the magic of editing or something? Was, did you take her out? It was indeed one one big day. Um, we did we did come back in between a couple of those outings to use the potty and to have some water and stuff like that, but uh, okay. one day. Um, that's why I was asking because that, I don't know. I mean, it seems like you went to how many places? At least three, four, four, maybe. Yeah, we were like walking around the neighborhood with a bus stop and a cafe, and then the pet store, and then the park. And nearby the park was the the lawn, the leaf blower and the lawnmower. So it, yeah, it was a lot. So I just timing wise for a little puppy, um, no different than when people just need to remember that they're taking their puppy out and they're too little to go potty out on the ground somewhere that they do have to keep their outings short or close to home. So they can either do short outings and do them multiple days in a row or you know, a few hours apart or yeah, just take a quick stop, hit stop at home or at a friend's house where they have a safe backyard. Um, you don't want to have your puppy holding it in their little kettle or a little carrier for wearing your arms for, you know, more than they hold it in any, in any regular nap time. Right. So mm -hmm. keep in mind um, and don't put your puppy down at the park and all these, you were in all these urban environments and they were certainly not probably the safest place to put her down for potty. So I'm glad that you didn't. 
and uh, people just need to know we didn't just cut that part out, but that, that it wasn't something that you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I did the one thing I, I kind of forgot to do was bring a water dish with me on our outing. So that was the other thing we were like, oh, we really need to go home so she can drink some water and use the potty if she needs to. So yeah, we. Uh, it also doesn't have to have a little just decom decom decompression <laughs> decomposition but that's not the right word uh, we don't want her to decompose <laughs> she can de decompress yeah um, for a minute and shake it off and be somewhere home with like touch base you know and then go back out so good good for you for that um i i see i, I don't know if you did this on purpose or not but one of the biggies especially for dogs that you know, live any anywhere near in an urban environment is the hydraulics of a bus when they as can be very startling and can really set a puppy off in the wrong direction if, if you're not careful or not aware of that. So um, definitely sitting by a bus stop and waiting for a bus to come and holding your puppy calmly and securely and hand feeding them while the buses go by is a really important thing for anyone who doesn't live in a suburban or country neighborhood or who plans to ever take vacations with their puppy to urban environments. Um, that was great. And going into the pet store was fun. Huh? That was a nice way to do it. It's great to bring your puppy into a pet store, but just again, don't put them down. Bring your towel out in public like you did and, and or your carrier so that her feet are only touching clean, known surfaces, such as your lap, your towel, or your carrier. So that was all really good too. Um, what was your favorite part of the whole thing? Or did you have a, you know, did you I think I, a cafe? I think I most enjoyed the serendipity of being at the park and then hearing the leaf blower and thinking like, oh, this this is kind of cool. You know, like this is the sort of thing I could imagine being scary. You know, it makes a lot of noise. It's funny equipment. Um, and so just being like, oh, let's go check it out. And yep. she just, I was also just generally surprised. She just did not seem phased by really anything. No, I watched her carefully, it, almost to the extent where it's almost almost unusual. I mean, it isn't, depending on the age of the puppy and how much you've done every week, you know, it, it, it should go that way. That's how you want it to go. But, you know, depending on when a person gets the puppy and their, their specific personality, um, you know, some puppies might be more shy, so, um, or, or um, startled, you know, at, at, at these new things. So uh, my recommendation there is you know, with the leaf blower, as soon as you heard the leaf blower and you were on the picnic bench, it, it, you're pretty far away, I'm assuming, or relatively far away. Um, you might, for some people, they might've just started hand feeding there. You know, if you heard it, she heard it. And right. she knows it's different. You don't have to go towards the scary thing in the environment for them to start to acclimate um, towards it. And that in most cases, it's better not to go towards those things too quickly or too soon. So, I mean, for the sake of editing or for the sake of the fact that uh, Daisy's super easygoing and already perhaps has um, adjusted to loud noises, as you, as you mentioned, I think, um, to me, that she lives with a rambunctious you know, young family. So noises are not, you know, sudden and, and loud noises are not new to her. Um, but if you don't have that situation, you know, you, you need not go closer. You know, that might be something you do progressively over several sessions versus right away. If you, if they can smell it or if you can smell it, see it, hear it, they've already registered it. So yeah, you know, register is all you really need to do to start acclimating them. I think that's a really good point that um, because Daisy, I haven't really seen her get kind of spooked and startled by anything. I think I was kind of letting my guard down in terms of that. And so, right. When, when I heard the leaf blower, I put her in the carrier and went right over to it and then pulled her out right next to it. And for a lot of puppies, that probably is not the best approach um, yeah. and would probably be overwhelming. Daisy seemed nonplussed. Um, and yeah, as you mentioned, she, she's grown up in a house with, with two young boys who have a lot of loud energy and you know are running around and dropping stuff and doing silly voices and falling on the ground. So she's just, I think she's seen a lot of of weird stuff and loud stuff already. So I think she might be, you know, better prepared than most puppies for for this kind of stuff. Yeah, but you know, it, yeah, it, it never hurts to go gradually and, and 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 regardless of whether you expect them to do well or not, um, it's important that people are reading their puppy's body language, right? And looking for ears down or wide eyes or panting or hiding or um, you know, frantically moving, you know, um, 
all these things that might mean mean that they're they're not comfortable and you want to try to stay just under that threshold you don't want to push the puppies to the where they're stressed out about new things that they're seeing so read your puppy's body language keep your sessions short and sweet by taking breaks at home or dividing these up you know, these field trips up into different days it doesn't hurt the puppy to get out pretty much every day if possible or almost every day to do a little something different and new you know um and just keep expanding their world that way. So, um, you know, tails tucked, um, not not taking food, not wanting to interact so much, kind of going like, I'm not here, you know, in their little, little happy place. You know, you want to watch for that. And for some puppies, you know, you can start just leaving them in their carrier and taking them places passively. So this was great. You were, this was about Daisy. You know, this was like, we are going on a field trip today. And I highly recommend that people do take the time to do that and be thoughtful about that process and, and make sure that they do it. But you can also just take the puppy with you when you're going little places here and there. Not always because they do need to learn their alone time, but I sometimes just throw a puppy in a carrier when we're going to Home Depot and maybe we're not gonna do a ton of puppy time, but the puppy's going and they're in the car and they're going for a car ride and it's not to the vet and we get out and maybe they have a chew you know, in there when I get to the store, maybe they don't, maybe I put a handful of food in. Maybe I don't, and I carry that bag, and I go and get the you know the supplies I needed from the store, and maybe someone says, "Oh, there's a puppy in there," and I zip open the little carrier and let them say hi. Maybe nobody addresses me. That's fine too. There's noises, there's rustling, there's those weird carts making noise. It's an outing, you know. It's and I think you can. So it, as much as it's important to have these special outings that are thoughtfully planned out and and where you're you know, actually taking the puppy into things, it's kind of like the best kind of socialization is just the natural ebb and flow of the world, like you would do with children, right? You take your kids on your errands, they get used to how to behave in the bank, you know? Um, they get used to riding in the car and it's not always entertainment time. And, you know, I think normalizing everything is, is the goal rather than highlighting too many things if possible. Mm -hmm. Cool, well, Thanks again, Kelly. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch and give me some some good feedback. And uh, unless you've got anything to add, I'll see you in the next video. See you next time. Bye-bye. Right. Bye, Kelly. That was good. Kelly liked our outings and reiterated the importance of keeping Daisy up off the ground or any surfaces where she could catch a disease from a dog that had been there before. Kelly also pointed out that rather than one big day full of outings, it would be much better to do one or two little outings every day so Daisy has time to process what she sees. I think the biggest piece of feedback that stuck with me is the fact that Daisy has not gotten spooked by pretty much anything. She took the bus, the motorcycles, the leaf blower, and the lawnmower all in stride and didn't seem phased by any of it. But a lot of puppies will not be like that and so it's important to watch your puppy's body language and not push them too much. If Daisy had been a different pup, a more timid pup, taking her straight up to that leaf blower would probably have been overwhelming. So that's definitely something I'm going to keep in mind for any pup I might work with in the future. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next video, week three, video four. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to learn more about dog training and behavior, make sure you visit DunbarAcademy.com to check out our selection of courses, many of which are completely free. If you'd rather watch more of our videos here on YouTube, just click the links to the right. And if you want to follow us on social media, everything you need is directly below. As always, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to click the bell for notifications.